viewers welcome to my channel iitj olympiads and ap physics with ambarish and uh, in today's video i am going to present an interesting technique uh, uh, many students have requested me to solve a je 2016 uh, problem from 3d rotation where two connected discs are rolling and uh, before i solve that problem i intend to give uh, entire theory required uh, from 3d rotation to which uh, which are prerequisites for doing that problem so i want to preface it properly before i try that problem and uh, this is the first video in that sequence uh, so what's the problem uh, let's say con consider a rigid body having moments of inertia about the three axes ix iy and iz so i know moments of inertia about x axis y axis and z axis so and what i want to do uh, i x i y and i z are known about mutually perpendicular axis x y and z passing through the origin find the moment of inertia about an axis having direction cosine cos alpha cos beta and cos gamma so uh, i know about x axis y axis and z axis and now i want to find the moment of inertia about an arbitrary axis which is having direction cosine cos alpha cos beta and cos gamma so we know the transformation formula for parallel axis so when there's a new axis we know how to solve moment of inertia about a parallel axis but this is not a parallel axis but it's inclined at some general direction cosine all right so let's see how to uh, approach this problem so what do we know already what's the definition of ix so when you are talking about moment of inertia about x axis you have to take the perpendicular di di distance of every point Uh, from the x axis and uh, multiply uh, that by mass and square that distance and multiply it by mass of every particle okay so that means what i x is nothing but sigma mi y i square plus z i square where y i and z i are the uh, y and z coordinates of the ith particle and mi is the mass of ith particle all right Uh, because uh, x coordinate will not make if you translate a particle parallel to x axis its distance from x axis is not going to change so that's why there's no xi when you're finding the moment of inertia about x axis similarly iy is simply sigma mi zi square plus xi square all right and similarly iz will be sigma mi xi square plus yi square so this information we know already from our standard theory of uh, rotational mechanics all right now i'm uh, and these are called moments of inertia so now i'm going to introduce a new term which is called product of inertia how do we define products of inertia so i can define a quantity i x y s sigma m i x i y i so let's say m i is the ith mass it will have some x coordinate and some y coordinate so uh, so what you want to do you want to take m i multiply its x coordinate multiply its y coordinate you get some quantity m i x i y i and you take the summation of that quantity over the entire body so that gives you the i x y this is one product of inertia similarly you can define i y z as sigma mi y i z i over the entire rigid body and i z x as sigma mi z i x i over the entire rigid body all right so this is how i am defining the products of inertia okay now why i am defining uh, will come to know uh, in a short while when i am going to do a derivation so i'll use this as the shorthand notation i x y i y z and i z x for this uh, long uh, uh, thing long expression so i don't want to put it like that so just just i'll substitute that by i x y i y z and i z x wherever i get this okay so this is how i define the products of inertia so what's the use let's see now let's say n cap is the new axis having direction cosine cos alpha cos beta and cos gamma from x y and z axis okay now if i want to find out moment of inertia about n cap i will need the perpendicular distance of every particle from the this n cap axis so what's the perpendicular distance let's say this is the mass mi having position vector ri so you know that uh, ri cos beta is the dis, uh, projection along the vector n cap and ri sin beta Uh, sorry uh, ri not sin beta basically uh, there will be some component uh, let us say ri is making some angle let's say theta so ri sin theta will be the perpendicular distance from n cap now i am interested in finding out ri sin theta and n cap is a unit vector so easiest way of finding ri sin theta will be what you just take the cross product of n cap and ri vector you know that cross product of n cap and ri will be simply n time uh, this is the magnitude of n cap is 1 so 1 into ri into sin theta that will be the magnitude of course there will be some direction associated but i can then take the mod of that vector so ri cross n magnitude gives the perpendicular distance of mi from the n cap axis okay and you know that now i i have to do a sigma mi and perpendicular distance square all right so that's what i've written over here so i about the new axis n is sigma mi 
R i cross n cap mod square. Okay, I hope you got this uh, because this R i cross n is the perpendicular distance, and this is giving that this. If you take the mod and square it, you'll get the square of the distance. All right. So this is the technique that I'm using for finding moment of inertia about the new axis. All right. So now I just need to find out the R i vector uh, and n cap vector, and then just do the cross product and then square it. So uh, this is very simple. So let's say M i has x coordinate x i, y i, and z i, x y z coordinates. So R i vector is nothing but x i i cap plus y i j cap plus z i k cap. Okay. So this is the R i vector. Okay. And what is the n cap vector? So it's a unit vector having direction cosines cos alpha, cos beta, and cos gamma. So it's nothing but uh, n cap is cos alpha i cap plus cos beta j cap and plus cos gamma k cap. All right. So R i uh, R vector and n cap I know. Now what you need to do? You need to do some bulwark. What you have to do? You take these uh, this vector and uh, in the expanded form, and you take this vector in the expanded form and take the cross product. You will get some expression. So then what do you do? Whatever expression you are getting, take the i coefficient square plus j coefficient square plus k coefficient square. All right. Uh, and uh, uh, square root of that is the mod, but we have to do the square again. So just uh, whatever you get by cross product, just take the i coefficient square plus j coefficient square plus k coefficient square. All right. So this is a little bit of bulwark, and I encourage you to do it uh, because I'm not showing all the detailed calculation because it's uh, it will get boring if I show that. But uh, just to convince yourself, uh, please uh, do that in detail. Just take the cross product of r i vector and n vector, and uh, I'll just tell you what the final expression that you'll get after that. All the bulwark. Uh, you can see that this is a huge expression that you are going to get after all that bulwark. Just uh, you'll have to rearrange the terms, combine the terms, and this is what you will get after uh, taking sigma m i r i cross n cap whole square. Okay, this is what you get. So what do you get? Cos square alpha times sigma m i y i square plus z i square. Okay, plus cos square beta times sigma m i z i square plus x i square plus cos square gamma times sigma m i x i square plus y i square. And there are more terms that will come. That is. Minus twice of cos alpha cos beta sigma m i x i y i plus cos beta cos gamma sigma m i y i z i plus cos gamma cos alpha sigma m i z i x i. All right. So this is a cyclic expression, and that's what you expect when you have a symmetric kind of R i and n. This is the expression that you get. Now, what is to be observed here? See very carefully all these terms. So what is the coefficient of cos square alpha? Sigma m i y i square plus z i square. This is nothing but i x. You can see over there. So let me use a laser pointer. So you can see over here, i x is sigma m i y i square plus z i square. So this is nothing but i y cos square alpha, right? Uh, sorry, i x cos square alpha. All right. And this term similarly, cos square beta into this term is nothing but i y z i square plus x i square. You can see over here. Okay. So m i z i square plus x i square. So this is cos uh, cos square beta times i y. Similarly, this is cos square gamma times i z. Okay. So this term will get simplified in terms of i x cos square alpha, i y cos square beta, and i z cos square gamma. What about these terms? So minus two cos alpha cos beta into this is sigma m i x i y i, and what is that? That is i x y. Okay. Similarly, the second term is cos beta cos gamma into i uh, y z, and similarly third term is cos gamma cos alpha into i z x. All right. So this uh, big expression you will get after doing that bulwark that I have just now told you. I have done it on my rough copy, and uh, I encourage you to do the same thing so that you have confidence in this expression. All right. So once you have this expression, now you can write this in a shorthand notation. Let me go to the next slide. So if you write it in the shorthand notation, as I explained, this becomes nothing but i about new axis is i x cos square alpha plus i y cos square beta plus i z. Cos square gamma and minus twice of this. Now still this looks very cumbersome expression, and uh, uh, you might be wondering that what uh, big use is this expression if I have to do so much calculation. But it turns out this is a very neat theorem uh, by which these uh, last uh, terms can be made zero by suitably choosing x, y, and z axis. Now what is that theorem? Let me state that theorem. Very interesting theorem. What is that? For any given rigid body and a given point O, it is always possible to find a set of three mutually perpendicular axes x, y, and z passing through O such that all products of inertia are zero for the set. Such set is known as the set of principal axes. So let me repeat. Uh, suppose this is the point O. So what this theorem is saying is there will be three mutually perpendicular axes. There will always exist three mutually perpendicular axes such that for that set. I x y is also zero. I y z is also zero, and I z x is also zero. That is, all products of inertia are zero, 
and through every point such a system of access will always exist that's what this theorem says so i'm not getting into the proof of it um, i'll give you the reference where, where you can find the proof of this theorem but i'm going to just use this theorem uh, in this current presentation all right so now what happens suppose you choose ix iy and iz such that all the products of inertia are uh, becoming zero or you can say ix iy x y and z axis are chosen such that x y and z are the principal axis all right then what happens this formula becomes very very simple it reduces this all these things will go to zero once the products of inertia are zero and the new moment of inertia is simply ix cos square alpha plus iy cos square beta plus iz cos square gamma so this is a very handy formula uh, and uh, it's for many geometries it will be very easy to locate principal axis i'll guide you a little bit on that so now uh, look at this formula so this is a very handy formula you can remember this uh, if you like and uh, now let's try to apply this formula okay so let me take an example problem so what's the problem find the moment of inertia of a uniform solid cube of mass capital m and edge l about its body diagonal okay so now uh, let me choose a set of axes. So x axis is perpendicular to this face, y axis is perpendicular to this face, and z axis is perpendicular to this face, and all these axes are uh, intersecting at the origin, which is the center of the cube, let us say. So now, is this set a set of principal axes? You can very easily see that, uh, suppose you see from the z axis in the top view. So, the, so uh, there will be equal number of particles having positive x coordinate as they will be having particles with negative x coordinate. Similarly, equal number of particles with positive y coordinate and uh, as the negative y coordinate. That's why, that's what, so that's why those lying in the uh, first quadrant, you can say in the xy plane, they will lead to the positive product of inertia, right? X, x and y both are positive. In the second quadrant, there will be negative. Uh, y is positive and x is negative, so product of inertia is negative contribution from the second quadrant. Third quadrant, it be again becomes positive and fourth quadrant, uh, fourth quadrant, it again becomes negative. So on the whole, you can see if uh, you choose this set of axes, i, x, y is clearly zero. Similarly, you can see that i, y, z and i, z, x are also zero. So this is a set of principal axes. In general, if you want to look for principal axis, think of axis of symmetry. Often you'll see that axis of symmetry are always principal axis. All right. So we have found a set passing through the center of mass. Actually, there'll be many other principal axes also, but uh, right now I've taken uh, uh, the principal axis set passing through the center of mass. So this is the set. This is a set of principal axes. All right. So now, how do I solve it? So we can see that x, y, and z are principal axis. Uh, it should be P A L, not P L E. The spelling mistake there. Okay. So x, y, and z are principal axis. So, and what about uh, moments of inertia about x, y, and z axis? So this is very simple. Suppose you want to find out moment of inertia about x axis. What you can do? You can squeeze this cube parallel to x axis. You know that when you are moving the particles parallel to an axis, it doesn't affect the moment of inertia. So what will happen? If you squeeze all the particles by moving them parallel to x axis, you will be end, you will end up uh, by, uh, having a square plate. So you, whatever is the moment of inertia of that square plate, same as the moment of inertia of the entire cube about x axis. So let's say that square plate is just this brownish face that you are seeing. Let's say this you squeeze the entire cube into this, and it's, it's this plate has the same moment of inertia as the cube. Now. For this plate, you can easily find moment of inertia by using the perpendicular axis theorem. So you apply uh, moment of inertia about this you take and then you take moment of inertia about this, this axis and mutually perpendicular axis moment of inertia you add and you get the moment of inertia about x axis. Okay, so that will be ml square by 12 about this axis and this will also be ml square by 12 after you squeeze it to a plate. So ml square by 12 plus ml square by 12 will give you ml square by 6 about x axis. All right. Similarly, you can find i, y and i, z also to be ml square by 6. So in this case, all the three moments of inertia by symmetry are ml square by 6. All right. So now uh, I want to find out the moment of inertia about body diagonal. So that's also passing through the center of mass body diagonal. So what will be the moment of inertia according to our standard formula? I n. So n is now along the body diagonal. That is I x cos square alpha plus I y cos square beta plus I z cos square gamma. All right. And here I x, I y, I z are all equal. So I can just write this as m l square by 6 into cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma. Now, this is very interesting here. I don't even need to write the, uh, the ex exact direction cosines of the body diagonal vector because you know that this quantity cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma is always one, no matter what the orientation of the vector. 
so this solves to ml square by 6 so here i have shown that not only the moment of inertia about body diagonal is ml square by 6 but any arbitrary vector you take uh, passing through the center of mass uh, any direction uh, you can take axis passing through center of mass the moment of inertia is going to be ml square by 6 only why because irrespective of direction cosine set this quantity is always going to be 1 so for about all the axis passing through center of mass the moment of inertia of a cube is going to be ml square by 6 all right so this was a solved example that i gave you now if you want you can try out the same problem for a uh, rectangle uh, not rectangle a cuboid so what's that exercise find the moment of inertia of a uniform solid cuboid of mass capital m and edges a b and c about its body diagonal okay so exactly the same method you can use uh, for finding the moment of inertia you can take uh, the x y and z axis as uh, perpendicular to the three faces this face this face and this face you take the perpendiculars passing through the center of mass and then you uh, try to convince yourself that that's the set of principal axis because i x y i y z and i z x will vanish so that leave, i leave it as an exercise for you and finally when you solve it the answer will come out to be this expression okay and uh, you can see this expression if you put a a b c all equal to l it reduces to the result of the uh, cuboid uh, the cube that we found okay so this is an exercise that you can try and uh, uh, now how to find the principal axis so uh, for a cone for example how will you find the principal axis so you can see that symmetry axis is there in the cone there's an axis of symmetry that's definitely one of the principal axis and the other two axes are going to be perpendicular to that symmetry axis so this more detailed theory about uh, why the uh, uh, i mean for the cone you take the symmetry axis and any two per axis perpendicular to the symmetry axis they form the uh, principal uh, moments of inertia okay they form the principal axis rather and you can uh, verify for yourself and similarly what about uh, tetrahedron or maybe a pyramid there also you take the symmetry axis and you take the mutually perpendicular any two axis uh, 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 perpendicular to the symmetry axis they will be the principal axis now what is the proof of that so that again i i, I, I would recommend you to uh, read uh, uh, something from a book called uh, uh, vector mechanics by beer beer and johnston so these are the authors beer and johnston and there are two more authors mazurek and one more so this is the book in which i recommend you to read uh, chapter 9 uh, which talks talks about ellipsoid of inertia the concept of ellipsoid of inertia uh, i am i'm deliberately not uh, getting into it because it's very mathematical and uh, it requires some intuition into coordinate geometry of three dimensions so if you have that uh, some intuition about uh, equation of ellipsoid you might enjoy reading this part and then you will know why i said uh, the about what i said about the moments of uh, the principal axis of cone tetrahedron pyramid and cylinder etc so it's not very difficult material but uh, it's little mathematical so i didn't want this video to get very long so i avoid so i recommend you to read from this book uh, beer and johnston vector mechanics all right and uh, that's uh, the theory for principal axis and uh, products of inertia and uh, uh, you can also try out using this technique for finding moment of inertia of a circle about an arbitrary axis through the center or maybe moment of inertia of an ellipse all these things all these problems can be solved using the uh, technique of uh, principal uh, axis and uh, products of inertia all right so i hope uh, you enjoyed this video and uh, this video will help you solve some of the problems that you face in your test series or maybe olympiads or itj that's all for this video and uh, if you like this video please do subscribe to my channel if you have not already subscribed and share this video as much as possible with your friends and do give it a thumbs up that's all for this video thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one